All right, students, today we are going to read My Father's Dragon, Chapter 9. My Father Makes a Bridge. Here's our reading objectives for today. You can go ahead and repeat after me. We can identify character traits. We can read words with inflectional endings and suffixes. All right, so we're going to start by doing the following. We're going to cover up the ending of a tricky word and we're going to read it in parts, okay? This is a strategy or something that you can use when you're reading on your own on Epic or during a book at home. We're going to practice with some um, words from the story and some words as examples, okay? And um, we also want you to do this on your own own today when you're reading, right? So we're in the um, picture here, we have the example of playing. When you cover up the ing, you see the base word play, and then you can add ing to it easily to be able to read a longer word playing, right? Here are some examples of endings that you can cover up. Ing, er, li, full. Remember, ed makes the d or ed sound, so you need to try all three. Est, less, and ness. All right, let's practice with these words here, all right? So I, instead of using my finger, I've used these white boxes, okay? But when you read, you can use your finger to cover up part of the words. You could also use an index card or a post-it note if that's something you would like, all right? So we have the word spoon, spoon, okay? I know I have the word spoon here. I just uncovered the ending full. When I put those together, I get the word spoonful. That's a long word that maybe I wouldn't realize that I recognized part of it if I didn't cover up the ending, right? There was a known word part I knew there, which was spoon, okay? The next word we have care. I recognize C-A-R-E is care. I know we have full there, careful. Let's see what we have covered up. Lee, carefully. I put those three parts together. I get the word carefully. Okay. The next word I have poor, poor. Okay, I have an ed ending here, so I'm going to try all three. I'm going to try porrid. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to try port. Mm, I don't think that's the word I want. Poured. Poured. I poured myself a cup of tea. I poured myself a glass of water. That's the word that I want. I have now, again, used um, covering up part of the word, the ending of the word, to figure out that this whole word is poured. All right, I see un. I definitely recognize that word piece. I see friend, unfriend, and I see lee. All together, that's unfriendly. Now, that word might have looked really unfriendly to you if you were trying to sound it out and you didn't cover up at least the ending, if not the different parts of the word, okay? So we made it friendlier by using this strategy. I see the word lift here at the bottom of the page, and if I uncover the ending, I have the ed ending again, so I need to try the three endings. If I have lift, that doesn't make sense, lifted, Lifted does make sense. Lift makes not as much sense. Lifted is the word. Like I lifted a heavy box off the floor. Okay. So again, make sure you're using this strategy as you're doing your own reading or as you're following along during My Father's Dragon today. All right. Our other objective is about character traits. Character traits are words or adjectives used to describe what characters are like on the inside. Examples of character traits are kind, generous, and brave, okay? So as we are reading today, I want you to think about the following question. What character traits can we use to describe Elmer so far in the story and why? So let's make sure we're thinking about that as we're reading. Okay, before we start, I just want to go over a few vocabulary words. The first one is crank. So you have to remember that... A crank is a wheel that you're going to turn, okay? And actually, we're going to find out that the dragon is attached to a rope 
that brings the dragon to to the other side of the island by using a crank. So this is a very good picture of what it might actually look like. All right. Um, the next word is summon. When you summon someone to do something, you're telling them they have to be somewhere and it's not necessarily a place that they want to be, right? So they're going to summon the dragon um, to come across the, um, to the other side of the island because, you know, they want him to be there. It doesn't mean that the dragon necessarily wants to be there, okay? The last word is crocodile. We're going to be... Um, seeing crocodiles in our story today, and I wanted you to have an idea of what they look like, okay? So here's a real-life picture of crocodiles. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the story. Chapter 9. My father makes a bridge. My father walked back and forth along the riverbank, trying to think of some way to cross the river. He found a high flagpole with a rope going over to the other side. The rope went through a loop, and at the top of the pole, and then down the pole and around a large crank. There's a vocabulary word. A sign on the crank said, here's another one, to summon dragon, yank the crank, report disorderly conduct to gorilla. So disorderly conduct means things that aren't supposed to be happening, right? From what the cat had told my father, he knew that the other end of the rope was tied around the dragon's neck and he felt sorrier than ever for the poor dragon. If he were on this side of the gorilla, if he were on this side, the gorilla would twist his wings until it hurt so much that he'd have to fly to the other side. If he were on the other side, the gorilla would crank the rope until the dragon would either choke to death or fly back to this side. What a life for a baby dragon. Oh, that's so horrible. My father knew that if he called the dragon to come across the river, the gorilla would surely hear him. That's very smart of my father. So he thought about climbing the pole and going across the rope. The pole was very high, and even if he could get to the top without being seen, he'd have to go all the way across, hand over hand. The river was very muddy, and all sorts of unfriendly things might live in it. But my father could think of no other way to get across. He was about to start up the pole, when despite all of the noise the monkeys were making, he heard a loud splash behind him. He looked all around in the water, but it was dusk now, and he couldn't see anything there. It's me, crocodile, said a voice to the left. The water's lovely, and I have such a craving for something sweet. Won't you come in for a swim? Let's pause and think here. What can we infer, or what can we guess that the crocodile wants to do to Elmer at this moment? We can infer or guess that he probably wants to eat Elmer. He's talking about wanting something sweet. He wants him to come in the water so he can eat him. Okay, let's see if my father falls for it. A pale moon came out from behind the clouds, and my father could see where the voice was coming from. The crocodile's head was just peeping out of the water. Oh, no, thank you, said my father. I never swim after sun, sun, sundown, but I do have something sweet to offer you. Oh my goodness, how smart is Elmer? He knew that the crocodile wanted to eat him. Perhaps you'd like a lollipop, and perhaps you have friends who would like lollipops too. Oh, lollipops, said the crocodile. Why, that is a treat. How about it, boys? A whole chorus of voices shouted. Hurrah! Lollipops! Ooh, they're excited. It sounds like Elmer is being very sly and is tricking these crocodiles into not eating him. And as my father counted as many as 17 crocodiles with their heads just peeping out of the water. That's fine, said my father, as he got out the two dozen. Two dozen is 24 pink lollipops and the rubber bands. 
I'll stick one here in the bank. Lollipops last longer if you keep them out of the water, you know. Now one of you can have this one. The crocodile who had first spoken swam up and tasted it. Delicious, mighty delicious, he said. Now if you don't mind, said my father, I'll just walk along your back and fasten another lollipop to the tip of your tail with a rubber band. You don't mind, do you? Oh, no, not in the least, said the crocodile. Can you get your tail out of the water just a bit, asked my father. Yes, of course, said the crocodile as he lifted up his tail. Then my father ran along his back and fastened another lollipop with a rubber band. So when you fasten something, he's tying it around, okay? Who's next, said my father, as the second crocodile swam up and began sucking on that lollipop. Now, you gentlemen can save a lot of time if you just line up across the river, said my father, and I'll be along to give you each a lollipop. So the crocodiles lined up right across the river with their tails in the air, waiting for my father to fasten on the rest of the lollipops. The tail of the 17th crocodile just reached the other bank. So I want you to try and picture this in your head, students. We have a river, and the, uh, Elmer has convinced the crocodiles to line up to essentially make a bridge for him to walk to the other side where the dragon is. So that leads us students to chapter 10, My Father Finds the Dragon, and this is actually the last chapter of our book. I'm so excited to read it with you next time. All right, let's head back to our presentation. Okay, so as you know, as we were reading, we were looking for character traits, which are words or adjectives used to describe what characters are like on the inside. The question that I want you to answer on a piece of paper or a post-it note is what character traits can we use to describe Elmer so far in the story and why? I want you to go ahead and pause this video and unpause once you've written down the answer to this question. Once you've unpaused, here's my example answer. A few character traits I can use to describe Elmer are brave, smart, and sly. He is brave because he keeps going on this adventure, even though he knows it is dangerous. He is smart because he keeps escaping. He is sly because he is really tricking the animals, even though they don't notice that he is doing so. All right, so your answer might look something like this. The only way that you could get this question wrong is if you didn't tell me why you think he is certain character traits, right? There are other character traits that you could prove to me that um, Elmer has. These are just an example of three of them. So if you had different character traits, that is A-OK -okay, as long as you used evidence from the story to back up your answer, OK? All right, so we're going to do this like we do at the end of every chapter. It says, when you finish a chapter, write a sentence or two about what happened. Leave it at the end of the chapter so you can come back to it later, all right? So I want you to go ahead and write a short two-sentence summary, pause this video, and unpause when you're ready to check your answer with my example. All right, here's my example for chapter 9. In chapter 9, Elmer gets close to finding the dragon, but needs to cross the river. He gives the crocodiles lollipops and walks on their, river ba on, on their backs to cross the river. Okay, so now all you have left to do, students, is complete uh, your reading response sheet for today. Um, let's go back to our objectives. We don't have comprehension questions today since we did have two objectives. So today we learned that we can identify character traits and that we can read words with inflectional endings and suffixes. Students, good readers, continue to do this in their own reading and not just during the reading of My Father's Dragon. So make sure you're doing that today and throughout the rest of the week. Okay, students, I'm looking forward to reading Chapter 10 with you. See you next time.